Hey, KK Metal Voice Man in the Street. Derek Riggs just arrived. I'm at the Hudson Ale Works. Highland Falls, New York. Or Highland, New York, actually. And he's about to do a signing. Let's go inside. Hey, it's KK, Metal Voice Man in the Streets. I'm in Highland, New York at the Hudson Ale Works, and I'm with, a pleasure to be with, Derek Griggs. Frog, the That's creator me. of Eddie. Eddie from Iron Maiden. Yeah. Derek is, uh, wow. Scary. If, if everybody remembers <laughs> the first time they saw this, it's because of him. How did you get started? Did you like horror and science fiction as a kid to make you want to paint? And, and yeah, I started all that. You know, I was into the horror and all that, late night movies. Right. Like, and I thought it would be good to paint science fiction because it kind of like spaceships at the time. They'd just come out with these nonky looking spaceships that were like flying junkyards. You know? And so I thought that would be fun to paint. Um, but then I wasn't very good at it, and so I a went painter? around. Yeah, I went around all these art directors trying to show them these these just awful looking um, science fiction pictures. And so then I started looking at other things because they they're very uptight people, as the art directors at the record companies. They were, um, you know, a monster had to look like this, and if it looked like that, it was wrong. If it looked like this. It was that was very wrong. Yeah, that was very wrong. <laughs> um, so, and you know, so spaceships had to look like a certain way, and I didn't want to do that. I wanted to make it look like a giant mechanical frog or something, you know, but they wouldn't have that. So, they didn't really want anything original. They wanted something that was the same as the last thing they sold, which is what heavy metal is doing now. They're not doing anything new. They're just doing something that's the same as the last thing that sold well. I heard a Black Sabbath album. I used to really like Black Sabbath, actually, back in the day. Some of that early stuff is pure blues guitar. It's beautiful. A lot of jazz. And I heard a, 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 a Black Sabbath album recently, uh, and it had all these sort of weird-looking monks on the front, and it was all orange. Oh, Bob Rules. I, yeah, Bob I thought rules. it was crap. Because it sounded like Maiden. It didn't sound like Sabbath. What happened to Sabbath? That was the Sabbath in the 80s with Rick Ronnie James Dio fronting it. Yeah, I didn't like that. Yeah. You want the blues good. Sabbath, the jazz Sabbath. I want the original Sabbath. Right. I want my original Sabbath. <laughs> you pack up copying Maiden. Give me some Sabbath. <laughs> Tony, I own me. Oh, mate. <laughs> Well, you almost worked on their last album. You, you sent something in, didn't you? For 13? No. So just no, got that I far. just got in touch and said, look, you know, we should really work together. Because, like, you know. Really? And so they started trying to throw some T-shirts at me. And I, the guy that was running the T-shirt thing, I couldn't even understand what he was saying. I'm like, I can't work with this person. No, they wanted you to do the art on the T-shirt. Oh, the well, they were, they were mm, I don't know. But what they came out with was that burning bush, which is like another crap, 13. another 13. crap Sabbath album. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, I don't mean that album. I mean the cover, you know, because Sabbath, even back in the early days, were known for having the worst bloody covers of any rock band anywhere. I mean, Paranoid, really. <laughs> <laughs> that was supposed to be called War Pigs, but they were worried about Vietnam. That's why the yeah. guys are just like that. Well, they were worried. They were English. We didn't they give weren't. No, the we, give a, we didn't give a shit about it. Oh, yeah. It was the record companies that did right, all that. Right. <laughs> <laughs> all those little corporate bastards in suits that talk about rock and roll as if they know something about it. You know. <laughs> and they, were, they never lived it, right? No, they don't. They don't live where we live. <laughs> so, so how do you land up with, um, like, at art school, or did you, how do you land up working well, for a record? I went to art school and they threw me out. Well, I got thrown out of school because um, I was doing chemistry and physics and 
I told him I didn't want to do that. So you're experimenting with drugs? No. I'm teasing. Um, I didn't bother with drugs, so I don't need that shit. Um, so I was, um, and then I, I, I just left. I thought I've had enough of this. So I got my paintings together and got in art college a year too young. And after a year they threw me out because of my rebel heart. And I told them the course was a load of shit, you know. <laughs> and, uh, and so then I went, uh, I moved to London and started trying to sell um, artwork in record companies for science fiction book covers and I wasn't very good at that. So then I thought, well if I do some weird stuff I actually want to paint, maybe I can, maybe I can sell it for record covers, because record covers are better than book covers. Book covers pay a hundred dollars, you know, for like two weeks work and they're like this big. And record covers, they pay 300 bucks for whatever you're doing, and it's like this big. <laughs> uh, did you get a different price on singles? Uh, I don't know, I can't remember. <laughs> Actually, I can't remember. So, I, I might have charged them the same, because right, it's the right. same for me. I don't care what they're doing with it. Mm. So, um, <laughs> how, do you, how do you get involved with Iron Maiden? You, you drew a piece called, from the way I remember reading, is uh, Electric Matthew Says Hello, right? And they, they, yeah. they contact you? No. Um, Maiden's manager was round at EMI uh, looking for an artist because Steve Harris knew he wanted an artist. He did a picture of, you know, five greasy looking guys by right. a fire escape. You know, so that's exciting. Let's not use that. You know. <laughs> so, um, anyway, uh, May, I got a call from EMI because I've done some work for them. I've done some jazz covers and some more rock and roll covers down there. And they said, uh, why don't you get your portfolio together and go down and see this guy at Wessex Recording Studio because he's got a band. He's got a little band together, you know, that's what they said. So I thought, oh God, that's miles away. You know. Wessex Recording Studio is the other side of London from where I live. So I was putting things in a portfolio. I had a portfolio. It was two bits of hardball stuck together with duct tape that I used to put my paintings in to <coughs> carry it around. And if the wind hit it, it acted like a sail and it'd spin you <laughs> right down and down and down. So I was pulling these things out, and all kind of different weird things. I was experimenting with styles, uh, trying to find something that I liked. And I'd done a, a series of paintings um, that were, they were basically for punk covers, and they were trying to embody some of the principles and ideas of punk rock at the time. Uh, and I had one picture, uh, which was a, a, a robot death. You know, the death figure with the soul. Um, you don't sell that, that was, that, that's what I was looking for today on your table. Do you sell copies of that anymore? We have them, I've got, we don't bring them out. We, we've got a limit to what we can do for these gigs. Um, so, that was symbolizing, well, a lot of people were losing their jobs to mechanization. Uh, back in the day, and that's kind of what that was supposed to symbolise. There was a punk philosophy about uh, the current generation being wasted, you know, because we had four million unemployed, and it wasn't that we didn't want jobs, there just weren't any. Um, so there was this idea that the, the generation was being wasted, wasted you, wasted opportunities, and that's what Eddie this picture represented, except he didn't have all this hair. He had a, a mohawk oh. that looked like a flame. And the painting was called Electric Matthew Says Hello. But later on it had to be changed to Eddie. For and did they reasons. have Eddie the head or you mean, or that was you and your, your name? No. Um, he was called Electric Matthew Says Hello. That right. was the name of the that painting. Was him, right. um, then I, I took it down to Wessex Recording Studio. I kind of pulled it out of my cupboard and I said, I thought to myself, um, shall I put this in there? Because it keeps getting me in trouble. I said, oh, fuck it, and I threw it in. Um, and took it down to Wessex Studio. And as they were going through it, Steve Harris saw this and he went, I want that. He didn't want to see anything else. He said, I want that. Because apparently he'd been shown lots of crappy paintings and countless mechanical women with mechanical tits and things. 
and he was sick of them because he didn't want a mechanical woman, he didn't want to be so stupidly obvious. Um, so, and anyway, I, the reason I got thrown out of places was I, I took this picture in its original form down to record companies and I was showing them places and the reaction was pretty much always the same. It was like, Peep. Not bad. <laughs> one guy, he said, I think you're insane. Your painting's awful. Pick up your stuff and get out of my office. You shouldn't be trying to put paintings like that on record covers. Another guy said, you look like a nutter walking around with your long hair and your, your paintings in a carrier bag like that. Why don't you go away and put a suit on and get a haircut? <laughs> Since then, of course, it's all fallen out on its own, but, you know, you can't win them all. <laughs> it happens, yeah. Um, now, were you responsible for the front, or is that them? No, That's that them. was either Steve Harris or a friend of Steve Harris's. They got the font from The Man Who Fell to Earth, the movie poster oh. starring David Bowie. Okay. If you look it up, it has the same font. They stole it from that movie poster. I've been told it had been used in a couple of other places before that, but that's where they saw it. So um, now, yeah, he becomes a character now. But yeah. Did you intend that? Over, you didn't intend that. I just did covers. Nobody had any intention of a mascot. There was no such thing as a band mascot back then. There just wasn't. There wasn't anything as heavy as Eddie, Eddie back then. They just went, Eddie was so far out there from what anybody else was doing. It was difficult to get it across to art directors who are pathetically conservative most of the time. These are people who run in rock and roll, and they're so conservative, they can't change their underwear. You know, it's just a... and, and so I was, um, Eddie was different. Other fantasy paintings, Stuff was happening with swords and shit somewhere off in the background on a hill. Yeah. And Ed, I didn't like that, I thought it was a bit soft. Eddie was in the street you live in. Um, and he wasn't doing some fantasy thing. He was looking straight back at you. This is you looking at yourself in a mirror. Right? And it hit people like a thump in the face. It really did because they hadn't seen anything like that. I had because I'm quite versed in art history and there were several precursors, not as, they didn't look like Eddie, one was just a naked woman, but she was at a party with some gentlemen of the period in about the 1700s and she was naked and looking straight at the observer. And this caused a huge scandal at the time in the salons, you know, they were, they were pissing themselves over it. Um, so I stole that idea, <laughs> and the, this, this street, Eddie's on, this is Endymion Road, which is where I used to live in Finchley Park in London. It's actually a railway bridge, um, and round the corner is where I used to live on Oakfield Road. But don't get down there, I don't live there anymore. <laughs> I live in California, <laughs> where it, it never rains. <laughs> um, yeah, so that was just the environment I lived in, and, and you know, the character I made. This is how we felt. This is how our lives were. This is the horror we've lived. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> and then you did the singles. And then I did some singles. <laughs> and then did for these. Yeah, I did, I did this actually after. Is that the first one? Yeah. This is the first one released, right? But it's the second one drawn. Because we did the album, and then we thought, oh my God, we've got to have something for a single. How do we make a single of Eddie without giving him away? So I said, well, I can do him in silhouette at the end of an avenue, and, and nobody will know. And, and then we hit him with that, and it's full on. You know? So that's what we did, and it worked. And running free, of course, he's running straight into something, isn't he? He's not free. 
<laughs> and that lo- looks like the singer that would come a couple of years later. It looks like Bruce Dickinson. Looks, looks like looks Bruce, so, Did you know Bruce back then? No. Nothing. Right? <laughs> Total no, coincidence. I didn't even know the band. I, right. I've met them once or twice and shaking hands now, and that was about it. You now, that, did you meet them along the way and did they did they help you? I met, no, they didn't help you, me. It was always you me. with the ideas. <laughs> they would give you the music and you create? No. Nothing like that. It was that. all up here. That's all the fantasy that people in the music business have. Right, have right. Worked. It doesn't work like that. No. But they're making the album as you speak. There is some recording studio somewhere in the world. They said, we've got an album. It's called this. It's about this. Can you give us a picture? And I'm left to go off and work it out. Right? There's none of this, oh, I use the, the music for inspiration and I was so inspired. And none of that ever well, happened. Done, right? Ever happened. Right, it doesn't work like that. They've, it's all got to come together at one point and be released. So it's all got to be done at the same time. It's like pouring water into a funnel. It's all got to come out the end at the same time. Right, right, right. You know, it, it can't work any other way. <laughs> you have a logo on every album. Yeah. Like, uh, what, what is that for? What, what is that little design you put That's on every a, Have you got a bit of paper I can draw? I mean, I can draw it. I have it right here. I don't have a pen. It's basically my signature. Do you have a pen? I do not. No and, um, pens. Introduce it. Interviewing an artist. Who don't it? have more. And they said, can you make your signature smaller into a little logo? So that uh, because it takes up too much room, I just used to sign it. Yeah. And um, so then I made this look well, this logo really, um, which is there. And oh, there it goes. Um, then what happened is they said, "Can you move it right into the corner so that the art directors can chop it off if they want to?" And I thought, "Fuck you very much. I'll do it my way." So I started hiding it in the picture, and that's why. Uh, and you hid it in every all, picture. You yeah, did. it's all always hidden places. It was like finding the Playboy um, money. It, it became like yep. the Where's Waldo of heavy yep. metal. Like, so, so even on. Yeah. Are you so, yep. I, I used to try to find. Come on, in, guys. Dude, this is uh, Adam and Ray from the Hudson Airport. Say hello. They Thank did a you. great job together. Great job. Today. We don't know who these Thank guys you. are. They're just walking on the street. I'm completely at a loss. <laughs> Thank you guys. Thank you, Derek. We appreciate you. This is awesome. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah, I remember you used to, you used to try to find those. That's awesome. Yeah. Definitely. Are you going to make some kind of announcement about something? Just, that was, I was just introducing them. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. Thank That's you. As usual, Thank I don't you. know what's yeah. going on. <laughs> now, um, a couple of questions. Uh, did you, did you, you don't have to talk about every one of these. This is my personal favorite, but do you want to talk about any of your art? Uh, I'll stick it there. I'll go through them all. Oh, we'll look through them. Turn this around so that you can see it and admire my, my beautiful creation. You got it. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll set you up. Good, brother. Brother, brother, brother. What's this? We've done that one. We've done that okay, one. Okay, so you want something them. else. Uh, <laughs> this was a disaster. This is called Twilight Zone. And the idea was, you know, that's the ghost of Eddie reaching over her shoulder, but you can't really see him except in the mirror. And they asked me Friday, Friday night, and they wanted it Monday morning. So it's done in two days, and it was a disaster. I didn't have any drawing board or paper to work on. The only board I had was called CS10, and it's for line work, and it's practically waterproof. It's chalk coated and you draw on it with these special pens and it makes a perfect line. But you can't paint on it. So that was the only thing I had. So I was painting on this stuff that's almost waterproof. So I started airbrushing stuff and painting stuff flat colours and then airbrushing on it. And I got to around here somewhere and the whole technique fell apart and just wouldn't work. Every time I put some paint on to paint the figure, it, it, it would take off the last bit of paint I did. So it was a complete mess. And it didn't look like any, I, it's supposed to be my friend Sylvia, but it didn't look anything like her. It came out all butch and everything because of the way I, I, I in the end, I was painting flat colors and airbrushing shades on it. 
Oh, no, she no. wasn't happy about that, was she? <laughs> no, she well, you wasn't. could see the, the Twilight Zone part of it, but now you're looking in the mirror. Yeah, yeah. you can see the idea. Yeah, but so the, it's his the, girlfriend. The execution kind yes. of lets it down. <laughs> <laughs> that one took two weeks. And that was... Um, Run to the Hills Run single. to the Hills, which is, you know... If you saw the original, it's quite... It's better painted than some of them. Well, this is old too. The, the, the monsters at the bottom. Oh. I used a technique invented by Max Ernst, where you uh, um, you just make smudgy, bludgy shapes. You make a mess. Right, right, right. And in that mess, you can imagine monsters, and then you just paint the monsters you can imagine. Um, and that's that's where they came from. So they were fun, you know. And I got to do a bit of decent painting. The the wings. This is from the album Number of the Beast, which took two days to paint. And it's got a picture of the devil, and his wings were supposed to be smoke and lightning. But it never really came across, because I did the background too dark. And when they printed it, they printed it way too dark. And, and so we lost most of it. Um, there's a lot of other accidents with Number of the Beast as well. But it's not bad for two days' work. Not, not, not <laughs> bad at all for two days' work, eh? This is... This is... This is the number of the beast. This was supposed... To, the number of the beast album cover was supposed to be for this single. But I did it, and Rod, Rod liked it so much, he locked it in the cupboard and said, that's it, we're having that for the album. So uh, I had to do another one, this one. Uh, which was all right for me because I got paid twice in a short period of time. Um, so that's because that was supposed to be Salvador Dali, but it never really worked because I couldn't get a decent picture of him at the time. This is before the days of the internet. You had to run downtown to the bookshop, you know. And if you couldn't find one, then you just couldn't find one. <laughs> <laughs> um, Two minutes. This one was the. Rod Smallwood's idea, that's the manager, that was his idea, he wanted this picture of a nuclear bomb and Eddie pointing at you uh, in black and white. So I did the, for the foreground in black and white, nobody ever seems to realise it's in black and white, huh? I don't know. But that, that's it, it's not really my idea, I just uh, kind of, there was a lot more detail in the nuclear bomb, but that's all been lost over time. Because that's what happens. You, you, after a few printings, the printing plates are so degraded uh, that there's not much on them, to be honest. <laughs> now, this is uh, my personal favourite. This, uh, seems Jay, to be, this is the most copyright infringed artwork in there the galaxy. Mm -hmm. um, there's versions with everything from troopers, you know, to Donald Duck and things like that. Trooper Ale? Yeah. <laughs> there's, no, there's Stormtroopers. Um, Stormtroopers done up like this mm -hmm. and oh, wow. all kind of things. A friend of mine stole it, he called it Funky Monkey Designs and he did a version of it. Everybody's done a version of it. I actually have one called Iron Mando and it's the Mandalorian Warrior. Oh, oh, no. my, yeah. my stepdaughter I only got, got paid the one time though. You know, one shot to buy. So, so yeah. that, that fucking sucks. <laughs> I'm going to burn my shirt now, I feel bad. <laughs> What, what's your favourite piece that you I did? don't have a favourite. You don't have a favourite. I was doing them so quick. They're coming. Do that. Give me the money. Right, next one. Comes in. Does it. People say, what's your favourite? I don't have time to get all fluffy and lovey-dovey. Yeah, really. no, I'm a commercial artist. Commercial art is really the, the down and dirty shit end of the stick of being an artist. <laughs> you've got to do it fast and you've got to do it good and you've got to get it done within a very short period of time. Now the last uh, album on my cover I want to talk to you about is the Made in Japan one. There is one with the Eddie holding Deano's head, correct? Yeah. And they asked it to be pulled because I they were going to fire. Yeah. yeah, well, it those was go for nine hundred at least. Does that? Oh God, yeah. Oh, I got two hundred for it. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, uh, they were doing a single in a, um, they wanted to call it Made in Japan because it's a takeoff from a uh, Deep Purple album. Um, and they liked that. Uh, the Deep Purple one was made in Japan. So it was a pun. So the, it was a live single, I believe. 
So they wanted a cover. The manager was off with the band somewhere in America. And, uh, and so he phones up and says, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll let you get on with it. So I, I thought, well, the obvious thing, put Eddie chopping off Paul Diano's head. Uh, and so I did that. And it's not a bad portrait for two days' work, actually. You know, considering all the other things I had to do. And so I got it down to the record company. And, and then they got a call from the manager. And the manager said, destroy all of those. Because they printed 250,000 single covers. He says, I don't want to ever see one again. If I ever see one again, somebody's head's going to rock. I thought, that's a bit heavy. So they destroyed them. I painted a new cover. You know, and later on when the manager came back, he said, you know that cover that I had destroyed? How do you repaint the second one? Stay there, I'm going to sneeze. Um, stay there, I'm going to sneeze. <laughs> um, he said, that's uh, Paul, Di Paul Diano's voice was giving him problems. He was doing one day in three, one day in four. You know, sometimes one day a week singing. He said, and Maiden just couldn't deal with that. They couldn't function under those conditions. So they had to find a new singer. And uh, they found Bruce Dickinson in the end. But the manager said, they've been auditioning new singers at this point. And he was getting wind of something going on. He knew something was happening. And he did, if he'd have seen that cover at that point, it freaked out. You know, and they'd have been left without a singer for the rest of the tour, you know, potentially. Yeah. And um, so they had all those destroyed and they had to do a different cover. And, and that's the story behind that. And uh, we mm. lost uh, Paul this week in the beginning of the week. We did. Rest Paul in peace, died. Paul. Sorry, rest in peace. Yeah. Now, um, you were made in 10 years. Pretty much did about 11 yeah. albums with them. Uh, various tw tw something like that. 12 uh, Lots. 11 <laughs> albums until you come back uh, 23 singles and uh, it comes up to after No Prayer of the Dying which had which originally did that have Rod Smallwood did you paint him on that album cover No, no Prayer of the Dying it was just the guy, just a guy. Just a guy. He, did he take offense to it? he never liked the oh. figure oh. I don't know why he looked like him. Him. <laughs> it did. he didn't at the time <laughs> he was thinner at the time <laughs> That's good. It was just supposed to be like a night watchman character who's okay. going around the grave the grave, the and hears something as well. What, what's this old thing? You know? The gravekeeper. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and then Eddie comes along okay. and gets him. Yeah. But there was no implied this oh. person or that person or any of that. Okay. So you never did, you, you don't take it from like, like, like personal experience? Sometimes. Sometimes. This is the street I used to live yeah, okay, yeah, right. on. the back of Killers, uh, that block of flats is the block of flats I used to live in in fin uh, Finchley, Etching and Court Road, it's good. Uh, I don't live there anymore either. Don't go knocking on their doors. <laughs> so, so there's, a, there's a Facebook, I've got a, a website called DerekRiggs.com, and on that it's got a trivia page, and I've actually got photographs of the blocks of flats. Um, oh, from on the, 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 the street and things. I've got them, you know, off, off the internet somewhere, so they're a bit out of date, but they're self explanatory. You can see the actual room where I invented Eddie, you know. I, did, I invented Eddie about a year and a half before I made him saw him. Well, before I made him just didn't. Really. And, I, and I did it, and I, I kind of looked at him, and I sat back and thought, that's going to make me rich and famous. <laughs> and then I thought, don't be daft. And I put him in the cupboard. <laughs> and, uh, well, it made me moderately famous. Uh, I'm still waiting for the rich part. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny, isn't it? Yeah, it's late. <laughs> it's late in the game. Got the wrong bus. <laughs> so, you, you, you come, here comes Fear of the Dark, and you, you give them the normal album cycle comes along, and you give them your, your, your what you give them a couple of ideas that you have and they didn't like them or like Yeah. Well, Steve Harris had this fixation because he gets kind of fixated easily. And he, he had this fixation on of Eddie being a little monster going, oh, no, no, no. I just thought that was stupid. You know, lack style, 
you know, not done anything right. Right, right, right. And uh, so I showed him a design for Eddie. He was, well, it was from the person's point of view lying in bed. And he had the covers there, and he had his feet sticking out the bottom of the covers, and he had the bottom of the bed and a window in the background. And Eddie was leaning over the bed going, And, and in the background there were all these monsters appearing out of the darkness. Right. You know, almost as if the window that you look out on was superimposed on another space that was bigger. And it would have been very it sinister. Nice. And, uh, and then they went with, yeah. <laughs> so they just said, yeah, you parted ways, you said it was amicable. You, yeah, you, I'm just you, you made friends, them. right? That they were, no, they weren't friends. So they were never really friends. They were no. just as business. Just yeah. As business, correct. That, you know, I was at home painting pictures. Uh, and they were flying around the world, playing live gigs, yeah. doing all, whatever they it's do. It's not like people think in their heads that you would in the bar with them going, Hey guys, look what I got tonight! Never. Not, that doesn't happen yet. That never happened. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was just at home doing this shit, and they were off doing what they needed to do, you know, to make it work. So, yeah. I spent a little bit of time with them, but we're nothing alike. I'm odd <laughs> by any means. We're all odd, I'm and, and, odd. <laughs> and they're normal trying to be odd, and I'm odd trying to be normal, and or trying to look normal. <laughs> How long is that one? We, we were 18. All right, give 20 we, minutes. In this. We were always going in different directions, you know, <coughs> polar opposite directions, but we kind of crossed paths in the middle, if, if you understand that. Because you're an artist, and they're, well, they're, they're a music yeah. artist, and you're a, a artist. Yeah, I, I'm a real artist, and they're just musicians. <laughs> so you did programs, everything for Maiden, right? You did the program shirts. Now, did you do the specialty shirts? I did some. That's one of them. Okay, that's one of them. Well, the basic Eddie's one of them. I don't know okay. about the rest of them. Now, this was from my first time I saw them at... Uh, yeah, that's the drawing. North Stage Theater in 1982. That's taken from Number of the Beast. Yeah. And this was the back, was definitely. So this is a reprint that they reissued. It's yeah. not the My original shirt would have fit like a. Yeah, no, they reprinted this doesn't all of them. <laughs> it doesn't. Most of what they publish now is just right. a pistache of bits of artwork that I did. And they stick one of their, their newer bits in just because. You've worked with a. a Many people after, after Iron Maiden, correct? Uh, Iron, the Iron Maidens. Yeah, I, I just... Uh, that was a nice album. That was a nice album, probably. That was Eddie, went up to Hollywood and got a sex change. They got a sex change. Now he's got big boobies. There you go. And Gamma Ray, you worked with Gamma Ray. That, that's a picture of uh, the Iron Maidens. Oh, okay. uh, it's a picture of a uh, female it. zombie Eddie character. On um, Hollywood. Pulling somebody's shirt off him. She's killing him for his t-shirt. She's a fan. <laughs> Serious fan. Uh, what was that about? The, uh, then there's Gamma Ray. You worked with yeah, Gamma Ray? Yeah, well, I did a couple of Gamma Ray guns. And that's uh, the German band. And who else did we do? There was Stradivarius. Stradivarius? You know, you I did, did a few uh, covers for Stradivarius. Our Tension, an upstate band. And yeah, only, yeah, I was no, thinking it was from upstate. I did a couple of covers for them. But, yeah. you know, they, they were not fun to work with. Well, no. <laughs> they're another European group, right? But I with don't a know who they upstate are. singer. The guy I was, don't even know if they're still going. I no, no, no. A lot of these bands are done if no. they're still going. But then you did um, Accident at Birth, and I have a question from uh, the K Man. See, K Man, I don't always wear the Metal Boy shirt. Gotcha. Um, how do you feel? Uh, how did you come up with the idea from Edison from Accident at Birth? Is that the character's name, Edison? Yeah, Edison was Bruce Dickens' idea. Okay, that was good. Bruce had these um, fluff puppets from, I think they were very old. I think they were like 17th century ones we found somewhere. Um, and and he, he, he had all these antique bits. And he, and he wanted this feel, that, I don't know, it's hard to explain, he wanted me to design a, a glove pocket that looked a bit like that. A bit like Mr. Punch, do you know right, Mr. Yes, Punch Mr. over Punch here? And Judy, the yeah. big chin and big mm -hmm. nose. Only a girl looked like yeah. that, very unfortunate. <laughs> <laughs> um, she had a voice like that as well, that was freaky. 
She'd be like, hello, damn it! Fucking hell, it's Mr. Punch, you know. <laughs> anyway, um, he had these puppets, and, and he wanted something in that vein. So, and, and he wanted it to be a glove puppet. And I thought that was a terrible idea, actually, because he's got no legs. And so it really limits what, what you can do with him. Um, well, we did it. And I designed that thing, that glove puppet. Mm -hmm. And we went with it for a couple of pictures, and then he went out to do something else. So... Um, what's the future like of Derek Rich? Um, I'm working on some electronic music. I stopped doing illustration work because there's nothing decent around. He got to the point where it was like, how would you like your zombie? And I mean, fuck off. You know? <laughs> You're done with the zombies. I've been there, done that. Actually, I invented that. You did. You were before The Walking Dead. <laughs> and on that note, Derek, thank you for your time tonight, man. Thank and you. thank you for the last couple of nights. It's been very interesting yeah. hanging out with you. Okay. Thank you, man. Thank you. Anytime. We can help you out anytime. Get back in the Hudson Valley, give us a call. Oh, well. All right. And uh, you're watching The Metal Voice with... Derek Riggs. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. He Thank said you. it and right. Camera work by... Flip that around, Jay. Jay Loud. Jay Loud. Oh, my Not original going. Metal Voice cameraman. The original.